In my previous roundup of SSDs, I tested with a laptop, but they make pretty good accessories for tablets too. There are a lot of external SSD options out there, and the specifications touted in the marketing can be confusing, if not outright misleading. Synthetic benchmarks don't always really give the best indication of real world performance, and you can have two SSDs perform similarly in one test and very differently in another, depending on things like cache and thermal throttling. So again, with five SSDs, I time the transfer speeds to and from my 2018 iPad Pro. These five SSDs range in price from a little over $80 to just over $300. They vary in capacity from 500 gigabytes to two terabytes. They each have some level of drop protection. Some even have dust and splash protection. Warranties range from three years to five years. Some of you who may be familiar with the external SSD market will notice that there are two very popular offerings not in this roundup, the Samsung T5 and the Samsung T7. The reason I don't have the T5 is because it's very similar to the lower spec SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. And the SanDisk has dust and splash protection where the T5, it doesn't have that. So I just gravitate a little more to the SanDisk. Okay, now what about the Samsung T7? Again, it's a fine drive and it works well for a lot of people as well, but I've steered clear of it because it's kind of underperformed in the tests and reviews that I've come across. Okay, so let's get an idea of what to expect from these SSDs and move on to the test results of how long it took to copy 10 gigabytes of photo and video files from each SSD onto this 2018 iPad Pro. I've grouped the G Technology SSD with the lower spec SanDisk SSD because they're both USB 3.1 Gen 2 and will have similar and slower speeds. The times to copy that 10 gigabytes from the SSDs to the iPad Pro, well, they're pretty close and all, except in the most expensive option, the SanDisk Extreme Pro version 2. And we're still only talking about 20 seconds from the slowest to the fastest. Now, what about moving that 10 gigabytes of data from the iPad Pro onto the SSDs? What kind of difference will you see there? Well, the rugged and expensive G drive just edges out the less expensive SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD. The one terabyte Crucial is just slightly behind the two terabyte version, which is faster because it has more cache and faster flash to play with. In this test, there was a surprise though. The time that it took to copy the 10 gigabytes of photo and video files to the SanDisk Extreme Pro version two, the most expensive and theoretically the fastest in the group was kind of middling. The SanDisk Extreme Pro version 2 does have a theoretical speed of 2 gigabytes per second, but very few devices have the Gen 2x2 bus to take advantage of it. So you're really going to see speeds closer to about a gigabyte per second. The SanDisk Extreme Pro version 2 did perform better in the laptop test, but given these test results, if you're only going to be using it with an iPad, it's difficult to recommend paying the premium for it. Okay, so going from these results, if you're an iPad user that primarily will just be accessing files on SSD, well, there's really not much in between them. Even with the least expensive and slowest of these external SSDs, the SanDisk Extreme Portable SSD, I've edited a video using LumaFusion with my iPad Pro just fine. If you really need something rugged, then the G Drive's IP67 rating and 1,000 pound crush resistance might be worth the $300. While SanDisk Extreme Pro version 2 performed better with the laptop, it's difficult to recommend if you're only going to use it with an iPad. The pair of Crucial X8s performed pretty well, but I would also recommend taking a good look at the lower cost options from SanDisk, both versions 1 and 2. Prices of SSDs tend to fluctuate, and that can really shift the balance for SSDs that you might be considering. So I would recommend picking two or three options that would work for you, keep an eye on those prices and pull the trigger whenever those prices fall in line for what it is you need. And that's gonna be it for this video. I hope it's been helpful. And if you have any questions or comments, please let me know down below. And otherwise, we'll see you in the next one.